What's good, YouTube? Welcome back. It's your boy Scholar, and today we got when Cristiano Ronaldo was known as CR9. All right, it's so the first time checking it out. I hope you guys enjoy it. As usual, please leave a like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you want me to react to when I got you. Hope you got a blessed day, and yeah, let's get it. In his younger days for Manchester United, Cristiano Ronaldo was one of the most lethal wingers the game had ever seen. Ooh. Because when you think of him and his dribbling at its absolute peak, I think many of you will remember the way he danced and showed that insane flair. Just Damn. ripping throughout the entire Premier League. <laughs> Ronaldo. And without a doubt, it was also the pinnacle. Ronaldo out on the fields doing a little salsa dancing back and forth the ball. God damn dribbling at its absolute peak. I think many of you will remember the way he danced and showed that insane flair, just oh. ripping throughout the entire <laughs> Premier League. And without a doubt, it was also the pinnacle of his pace and agility. But we all know that as Ronaldo moved nice to Real pass. Madrid and matured throughout his career, he would switch his playing style completely. So... That of an absolutely lethal goal scorer and finisher. Becoming the deadliest goal scorer Ooh. in the world. With just an insane amount of records, even going as much as scoring over 50 goals a season for six consecutive seasons. Damn. And you can debate on which was version of... Who is the number one, like, scorer in, like, football overall? Let me know in the comments. Like, who is the number one in, like, goals? Is it Messi? Or I have no idea who is number one. Let me know in the comments. Of Cristiano Ronaldo. But if there's one thing I'm certain about, it's that the best combination of both a Manchester United and Real Madrid Cristiano Ronaldo was no other than the single year throughout the 2009-10 season Ooh. in which CR7 was briefly known as CR9. Because okay, so I know the CR7. I heard it before, but I never heard about CR9. In which CR7 was briefly known as CR9. Because in the summer of 2008, after winning the Premier League and Champions League titles, just being Damn. one FA Cup shy of winning the treble, while also scoring 42 goals and providing 8 assists in 49 matches, a total of 50 goal contributions in 49 matches, Cristiano Ronaldo would put his body through a lot. So much so that he yeah. inevitably had to undergo ankle surgery, as two bits of cartilage in his ankle had become unattached Damn. due to the sheer physical strain he put in his body. After all, like I said, it was the peak where we saw Cristiano Ronaldo at his most agile and skillful. All that speed and flashy dribbling demands a lot out of the yeah. body, especially to his knees and ankles. Especially for like football too, because you constantly like going back and forth, back and forth. It's not like basketball where you just go for like a few minutes and then you get like sub out and then, you know, you have like a few minutes rest on the bench or whatnot. So it's you know, you get more of a break. Football is just, like, constant unless you got, like, subbed out. But I don't know, like, too much about football or soccer, whatever you want to call it. So I don't know too much about it. But, yeah, for what I've seen, they don't, like, sub too often. So... <laughs> and I know what some of you are thinking. Sure, the fastest Cristiano Ronaldo was ever recorded was when he played for Portugal in the 2018 World Cup, maxing out at 40 kilometers an hour at 33 years old. But you have to realize he was sprinting off the ball. And you can't convince me that before all those injuries, just because his speed wasn't tracked back then, that this version of Cristiano Ronaldo wasn't even faster. I mean, just watch the way he totally gaps these defenders Damn. back then, all while still dribbling the ball. It's clear to see that before his injuries, he was a complete speed demon. He kind of reminds me of Messi too. The Premier League so With badly, the speed. got up to the point where the only way to actually stop him was to dive bomb his ankles in hope that he lost the ball. But anyway. Oh my god, nah, that's a red flag. Oh no. Nah. Was to dive bomb his ankles in hope that he lost the ball. Nah, that should that should be that should be a penalty. That should be like I don't know what's the rules, like I said before, but that should be a fine. No, you went straight. That's pure ankles. That's not even like a temp for the ball. But anyways, this would be the longest time that Cristiano Ronaldo would sit out due to injury slash recovery for his entire career. A total nearing almost 12 weeks. Damn. And naturally, after such a procedure, you'd expect it would take some time to really recover. And well, the stats would show. As in the 2008-2009 season, he would only score 26 goals and provide 12 assists. A total of 38 goal contributions in 50 matches. Not nearly being as effective or explosive as he was during his... I mean, yeah, he just got anchor surgery. You don't expect him to be 100%. <laughs> 
It takes time, bro. It takes time. Just because he's playing doesn't mean he's 100%. He could be 60%. He just easing back to, you know, the routine. Previous Ballon d'Or winning season. And without their superstar at a true 100%, although Man United would win the Premier League, Community Shield, and Club World Cup, they would finish second in the UEFA Super Cup and, of course, lost out on the Champions League final. So in terms of value, after just having gone through major surgery and producing roughly 24% less goals, this was the quote-unquote cheapest that Cristiano Ronaldo would ever be on the market for over a decade. And so Manchester United would say goodbye to their Portuguese winger, though relatively only a brief time. That's just a show you, right? That's just... Damn, bro. I just to show you, you're just a number to these companies and these organizations. He got injured, so you just drop him? What? <laughs> so Manchester United would say goodbye to their Portuguese winger, though relatively only a brief time with the club. He already forever solidified himself as a legend. So the fact that Real Madrid Damn. went all out, paying 94 million euros and breaking the current transfer record at the time to get a player who just had a major surgery and was seemingly struggling after a Ballon d'Or year really shows you all you need to know about just how valuable the 24-year-old winger was. But Real Madrid were confident because what they concluded in their medical checkup was that Cristiano Ronaldo simply needed more time to fully recover and exactly. get back into form because exactly he just went through ankle surgery he's not gonna jump back up and be like super active again like superman again or whatnot so yeah it's kind of like damn as he walked out of the tunnel in what would be the most attended presentation for any footballer in history he would walk out not as cr7 but as cr9 and the simple reason as to why he didn't get to wear his iconic number seven was due to the fact that another longtime Real Madrid and Spanish legend himself was still around and wearing it for the club. Oh. No other than Raul. But it wasn't just the change in number that made CR9 so special. It was because this was when he really began a change as a player. And this season specifically is where I believe we got to witness the best mix Ooh. of not only the dribbling, speed, and flair of Manchester United Ronaldo, but also the goal scoring and finishing efficiency and lethality of a Real Madrid Cristiano Ronaldo. But of course, Cristiano Ronaldo as the new face of Madrid's Galacticos 2.0, at that point being the most expensive player in the world, Damn. playing for one of the most harshly critical clubs, had immense pressure to perform. But the thing is, just like him playing even better as before, I think it's a lot to do with the previous club dropping him and just losing faith in him. Just like, bro, give him time, bro. Like, like damn, I mean, give him an opportunity or whatnot. Like, jeez. And that just lit a fire under him, and he does like, know what? And the fact that he came back with a different number was good as well, too. Because it's like a rebrand. It's like a different version. It's like a better you. You feel me? So, being like, you're not going to be the same as CR7, come back as 9, even better, bro. See, see things happen for a reason, you know? It's just like, warm. Even not, not everything is just coincidence you know things happen for a reason and more so than the other big signings like chabi alonso and another former ballon d'or winner ricardo kaka but as soon kaka. as cr9 got onto another former ballon d'or winner ricardo kaka but as kaka. soon as cr9 got onto the pitch he instantly proved himself and cast away all the doubt as CR9 became the first Real Madrid player to ever score Ooh. in each of his first four league matches. Because then manager Manuel Pellegrini had different plans for Cristiano Ronaldo. He would start experimenting by letting CR9 play sort of like a striker, but at the same time still allowed him to play more deep and got him involved in build-up play. Because like we saw from his days at Ooh. Manchester United, more than any other time in his career with Los Blancos, this was the most that Ronaldo would display his exceptional skills and dribbling, regularly taking on multiple defenders to create chances and carry Damn. the ball. Especially in the beginning of the season, Ronaldo's flair was at an all-time high for his time in Real Madrid. Ronaldo's free kicks at the time were also at their peak, as it would tie for the most free kick goals he would score in a single season with seven, including an absolute show he would put on in September 2009, where he would score his very first Champions League goals for the club off of no other than netting two free kicks in a single match against FC Zurich. 
Sure, there have been many jokes about how Ronaldo's free kick technique has not aged as well, especially in his later 30s. But oh. in his mid and late 20s, it has not aged as well, especially in his later 30s. Bro, the ball hit the cameraman in his head. Oh, snap. Bro, that was way off. About how Ronaldo's free kick technique has not aged as well, especially in his later 30s. But in his mid and late 20s, particularly... Anyways, yeah, let's get it. Most accurate and consistent free kick taking in his career. And just 15 days later, in another Champions League match, only his second ever for the club, he'd go on to dominate French side Marseille, scoring yet Ow. another brace, totaling four goals in the tournament in just two matches thus far. And don't forget the pace. Sure, Cristiano would still maintain pace as he got older in Real Madrid. It's so crazy how, like, not scoring gold in each game is, like, how common it is in, like, football. I'm so used to, like, basketball when usually, like, if every player is going to have at least, like, 20 points minimum per game. So, it just it's, like, so different to see it, the different sport. Well, but gradually, his movement would be mostly off ball. However, in his earlier years, particularly in this season, his agility and pace, although not as amazing as it was before his surgery, was still some of the most explosive and entertaining throughout any of his time at Real Madrid. Because Damn. Ronaldo was basically one of the most physically fit forms he's ever been in. Imagine your like you injured is still like top of the class. <laughs> Bro, that's a bro. That's a what's Can't one hell of an all flex. How it was truly the perfect mix of the agile and flashy winger he was in his younger United days, only with the added strength and muscle, trying the same moves and dribbles, all while scoring goals at a much more efficient rate. However, in October of 2009. Ronaldo would suffer an ankle injury during international duty with Portugal that would sideline him for nearly two months, missing a total of 12 matches for both club and country. A very significant setback, especially Damn. for Real Madrid, as they would lose 2-3 to AC Milan in the Champions League and fail to secure what would have been an easy three points to clubs like Sporting Guillaume without their top scorer. CR9. But fast forward to after recovering from the injury, CR9 would continue where he left off, going on to score a total of six goals in just five Champions League matches. And back in La Liga, Ronaldo Jeez. would still play with that flair and dribbling aggressiveness. However, this is when he really started to think about shifting his playing style to try to limit his injuries and preserve his longevity while maintaining efficiency as much as possible. And you can't see a lot of these players starting to have a mindset like LeBron. I'm telling you, do what your body says, bro. Don't try and please other people and whatnot. It's your body. Take care of that shit, bro. I'm telling you. If you have to make adjustments, so like if your body telling you, hey, I can't keep this up, make adjustments. Really blame the guy, as this was the second most injured season he'd ever have in his career. A total of seven weeks Damn. on the sidelines. Then came the new year in 2010, where throughout the second half of the season, CR9 would continue to maintain his goal scoring. And it was getting clear that his ability to find the back of the net was only getting better. As at the time, this was the most efficient season that Cristiano Ronaldo had ever had in his career thus far. Just the most entertaining style of play with dazzling flair combined with the lethal goal scoring. And if the footage you're watching wasn't enough to remind you that Ronaldo did indeed move like this on a game to game basis, I don't know what will. And although Lionel Messi would lead the league in scoring, CR9 was more efficient, scoring Damn. a total of 33 goals and providing 10 assists, a total of 43 goal contributions in 37 weeks in his first season with Real Madrid, as they would lose the league title by just 3 points, having Damn. the most points ever in a second place finish for La Liga. And if it weren't for those- Man, Barcelona is like that? Shit. Having the most points ever in a second place finish for La Liga. And if it weren't for those injuries, we would have definitely had the chance to see more of that flair and dribbling with Cristiano Ronaldo in a Real Madrid jersey. But perhaps as sad as it was to see him progressively be less aggressive with his dribbles and handling, as he was transitioning to a newer role, it did showcase Ronaldo's ability to adapt and evolve his game. His Ooh. willingness to transition from a flashy winger to a yeah. prolific goal scorer in the end did work out best for his career. Sure, he would still dribble in the next few years to come, especially in one-on-ones, but he never was truly as aggressive or flashy, willing to continuously take on multiple defenders in a Madrid shirt at why he sound like he's talking about Messi?
Messi will be taking on the entire team. Just, excuse me, excuse me. Just cutting through straight to the goal. As he was at SCR9. And unfortunately, his Real Madrid squad back then overall was probably the weakest of any year he's been in Madrid. As I ain't gonna lie. Look at this squad. I'm like, eh, I don't know football that great. But looking at this squad, I don't really see too much of a threat. <laughs> Just by looking at it, I could be wrong, but yeah. This season, the club would offload older and out of form players like Guti, Rafael van der Vaart, and Raul, giving space for Cristiano Ronaldo to once again wear number seven. But it really does make you wonder what if he never had Keep those serious injuries? What if he was always able to play the same way as CR9 with those Champions League winning Madrid sides, maintaining that insane goal scoring efficiency, but still having that prime speed, agility, and dribbling? Well, that at least Damn. definitely would have been a sight to witness. That's it for this reaction. If you enjoy it, please leave a comment. Ronaldo and Real Madrid. Like I was oh, saying, just imagine bro, the what? Shut up, man. Like I was saying, leave a comment, like, subscribe, and I'll see you for the next one. I appreciate it.